Today we are diving all up into the benefits of yoga. I am a fan. Um, it's something that I put in all of my clients' program. Um, hopefully you are already a fan. If not, I think this episode will make you a fan. And what's cool about Fiji is that she has brought about a platform called Do Yoga With Me. So Do Yoga With Me dot com has let's see they have over a thousand class videos they've got over three hundred thousand registered users um they're used all over the world in almost every single country with phenomenal instructors and she's getting into why she created it it's such a beautiful heartfelt reason she's talking about what yoga has done for her and also people that she has worked with and experienced over the years and she puts it in such a profound intelligent way. I think you guys will really enjoy and hopefully this will inspire you to add yoga into your health practice. It's the reason I put it in all my clients programs is because it just hits so many birds with one stone. So yeah, very excited to introduce her to you. We'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Fiji McAlpine. Okay, so Fiji yoga. We're talking yoga today. I was telling you that um, I have yoga in every single one of my clients' programs. Um, I am not a yoga instructor by any means. I just recognize the benefit, um, and I really heavily encourage it for anyone, especially if they're weight training. I'm like, you probably need it more than if you weren't weight training because <laughs> we just start to lack that mobility and flexibility. And yoga, is, it's so good for that, but also you get this like spiritual boost and this meditation boost and this re emotional boost release and like all of these things. So um, I'm a fan. And I was wondering if you could kick it off before we get into this awesome thing you've created. If you could tell us how you got here, what yoga means to you. Yeah, um, that's actually really a great story, too, because it kind of ties into what you are offering your clients, which I love, because everyone does need to do yoga. It's about creating mm -hmm. stability and mobility yeah. in balance. Right, right. right. Yeah. So um, I've been doing yoga a bit over 20 years now, and I was first drawn to yoga because of an injury. So mm -hmm. I was in my early 20s. I had a back injury and nothing was touching the pain. I was trying mm -hmm. physio, just everything that you could think of to try to alleviate this pain. And finally, the physio said, you know, I think you should go try a yoga class. And so I went and wandered into the class and it actually helped a little bit. And mm -hmm. so in desperation to alleviate my pain, I went back again and it helped a little bit more. And so I just kept going to alleviate the pain. And then kind of before I knew it, this is often what happens with many different physical mo modalities is that all of a sudden I was just a, a regular practitioner and I don't even know when the back pain stopped. So nice. it just kind of was one of those transitions. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I had really fallen in love, in love with the benefits of the practice that you were alluding to that show up, even if you're not expecting them. So I always joke that whenever I teach a, a class, there might be, you know, 20 or 30 people in the room and everyone came for a slightly different reason. Someone came because mm. their personal trainer told them that they have to go <laughs> one day a week. Someone came because they're having back pain and mm. maybe their physio recommended it. Somebody else might be coming because they want somewhere to wear their yoga clothes or they got <laughs> dragged in there by a friend or it worked on their schedule. So everyone comes for a variety of reasons and those reasons will be met, but mm -hmm. there's so much more that they're going to get as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yoga just does mm -hmm. the work, which is so great. And I love as a teacher that I get to kind of watch the magic work through mm -hmm. the people over time. I just get to see the little incremental shifts and changes. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty curious actually to ask you, what do you hear back from your clients who you say, okay, I want you to start doing yoga one day a week. Mm -hmm. What do they share with you about the shifts that they feel? Um, the, the usual thing that I hear when they've started instituting it is they it, it, like it's, I can hear it right now. They say, I, I really needed that. I, yeah, I think I really needed that. I think I should do more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and I, I actually haven't, cause the first, when I first started going to yoga, of course, you know, me little and this weightlifter, I was like, oh yeah, the power stuff, the hard stuff, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> shocker, right? Um, and I started that way and I was like, 
I mean, it kicked my butt. Like I could not complete. I, I It was very humbling. I was like, I can't even finish these sequences they're doing. Like, holy crap. Like, okay. So that kind of humbled me. And then it humbled me so much that I started going to some of the more like yen or restorative or like, and those, that was where I had my, I really needed that oh, yeah. <laughs> experience. Um, and so I'd say that's mostly been my experience with it. it. I mean, ranging from men or like women who are a little more like they want to lift big, powerful weights all the way to like people who are maybe more naturally inclined to things like Pilates or yoga or whatever. They all kind of say the same thing. They just recognize that their body, like they can move better now. They may have realized like me, like they need to slow down a little bit and like actually connect in different ways to their body than they have. So that's been um, mostly what I've experienced. And then the last thing, this is kind of random. I don't know if you feel comfortable asking this, but I've been surprised since I've started recommending yoga. I I have gotten this a couple times of people saying that they can't do yoga because they're Christian. Mm. And it really, I was like, wait, what? Because I, you know, it just shocked me. I was like Googling it. I'm like, I, I don't understand. Like, wh why not? You know, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you have any like thing to say about that? I have like, it's so funny because I have stories about that. So when I first started teaching yoga, I was actually an elementary school teacher in Fresno, California, which people think of California as being a very liberal state. And for the mm -hmm. most part it is, but Fresno kind of seems like a bit of a red dot in that blue state. So there's okay. more conservative mm -hmm. and, a, and uh, you know, a lot, fair bit of people who are quite religious. And so when I was teaching this third grade class, I decided I wanted to bring yoga into the classroom experience, thinking that it would really benefit the kids. And I got a lot of like pushback from the school initially because they were afraid and from the parents who really misunderstood what yoga is uh -huh. and had the, the belief that it was a religious yeah. type of exercise. And I had parents who said that exact same thing. I, my child isn't going to do the yoga because we're Christian. Uh -huh. And so it really was about simply eliminating just the ignorance around it. And, and people don't know what they don't know. It's, it was, you know, it's when people say that I never get offended or upset. I, I think of it as an opportunity to share some more knowledge and illuminate the fact that it's a practice that is non-denominational. Yeah. It's a practice that is connecting to self and, uh -huh. and any religion can practice yoga. And I have people in my classes who come from every walk of life who are very religious and spiritual in different ways all different paths or who are not. And everyone mm -hmm. is able to find something. So there is sometimes that resistance there. And of course you can't force anyone to come. Yeah. But you right. can give them the information and say, it's maybe not what you think it is. Yeah. You can be curious and, and try it out. Yeah. It definitely took me off guard and I had to do some reading about it. Cause my experience of yoga class was like, mm -hmm. I couldn't see how there could possibly be any, like, I'm like, we're just learning, like, we're just like opening up our hips and like, <laughs> you know, like moving our bodies. Like, I don't see where this like plays into religious beliefs at all. And then as I got deeper, I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, maybe there's like these like yoga cult type extremists or something, but I don't think that's what you're going to find. in like a typical yoga class. <laughs> like at least I've never found any, I mean, maybe a meditation at the end that's like telling you to love yourself or something, but it's yeah. nothing like yeah. religious-y. <laughs> yeah. So Which anyway. Most spiritual traditions do that anyways. It's all the ancient and ageless wisdom is telling us to love ourselves. You know, right. It, but right. everyone has their own way of saying it. And it really is. And also, you know, so much in spirituality, there is the love yourself and love your neighbor. So that's right. also what we're learning in yoga is living in a living with consideration. Yeah. Is what, you know, because you learn that in your body that every action has a reaction. And mm -hmm. so you have to be considerate in the way that you're moving because it's going to impact you in some way. So once you learn to be considerate in how you move, then right. you can be considerate in how you think and you can be considerate in how you speak and considerate mm -hmm. in how you act. So mm -hmm. you start to see connections more, I find, mm -hmm. as you go deeper into your practice, mm -hmm. you go well beyond the mat and into the world.
Yeah. I, one of my personal favorite benefits uh, or, or like experiences of yoga is like, I don't know if coming from a weightlifting strength coaching type background, it's very like, this is how you do it. This is proper. These are the biomechanics, blah, blah, blah. Like it's very like rigid that way. Right. And then you go to into a yoga class and it's just, it's so loving and so respectful. And it's like, this is your practice and, you know, discover your own body and how it moves. And I love that about yoga. I'm like, yes, yes. I try to bring some of that into weightlifting. You know, I really just made a post about that today is like really connect to your own body, you know, mm -hmm. and you, yoga just has that in spades. It always has. I've never been in a yoga class where that wasn't the feeling of this like respect and loving on yourself, being gentle, but exploring what your body can do, but not in a forceful way. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's such a, like you're saying, it, it, it translates deeper than just that class. Like it's mm -hmm. kind of like, oh yeah, okay. I can be like that with myself. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, that's the really the great thing about yoga is that philosophies that we have are just possibilities until we actually experience them. Yeah. Yeah. And so what yoga does, it, it actually slowly, I have this term that I use millimeter miracles. Mm. It slowly begins nice. to shift your self perception. Nice. So what you believe about yourself and how you treat yourself slowly shifts the longer that you do yoga. And then you start to really realize that more is possible and that you can treat yourself in different ways. So it really, it's an expansive mm -hmm. practice where it mm -hmm. expands a lot of horizons. And like you said too, it's not maybe in weightlifting, there is this idea of mind over matter, right? <laughs> Whereas in yoga, it's a little bit more like, mind into matter. Yeah. Yeah. And being guided by the sensation ex instead of the expectation. Right. And seeing where that takes you in that mm -hmm. very honest dialogue of what's really happening here mm -hmm. in my body. And sometimes that means push mm -hmm. and sometimes right. it means soften. Yeah. And so I appreciate like learning that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that can be translated into uh, that's how I approach weightlifting. It's it's that same mentality yeah. of like, I'm listening, mm -hmm. I'm believing in you, I'm checking mm -hmm. in, you know, but it's rare. Like, I, I feel like a little bit of a weirdo in my approach because most people it is like, yeah, like do what I say, body. And that's like, yeah. no, it's not really like that. I mean, it's more like a, I look at it like a parent child, like how I would be with a child of like, I believe believe in you. I know you're capable, but I also am listening. If you're telling me like, uh, -uh I'm going to like be respectful of you, but yeah. it, sometimes that's a hard message to deliver in weightlifting. Whereas in yoga, that's just how it is, you know? So I really yeah. appreciate that. Um, okay. Let's talk about like, cause I, yeah, when I first started going to yoga, I was like, I'm walking different. Like my whole mm -hmm. body feels different. You know, can you talk about some of the experiences that you've seen over the years of like what yoga has done for people. Yeah. And I've actually been able to witness some pretty amazing transformations, both on the physical level, even on the mental level and the way that oh. people sort of show up in the world. Mm -hmm. But for myself, for you, and for a lot of people, something that is usually right in the beginning of that yoga journey is a transformation in posture. Nice. And the transformation in posture happens in yoga because you're doing two things. You're actually building strength and you're dissolving tension at the same time mm -hmm. in key areas that will allow you to have a better posture. And the great mm -hmm. thing about when you have a better posture is that you create the form for functional breathing. Right. So when you have an upright posture, it's actually easier for you to have functional breathing. And mm -hmm. if you're breathing in a functional way more often, it impacts your nervous system. Right. So this is also why we see people's postures improve and their mood improves as well. Right. At the same time. So the tension that you're dissolving in the yoga practice is often carried around the shoulders and the neck. And a mm. lot of this is because of our modern lifestyle that has our arms out in front of us all the time. So if you think mm -hmm. about how many hours a day you're driving... Mm -hmm. And then if your hands aren't out in front of you driving, what, what else are they out in front of you doing? Mm -hmm. Typing or right. they've got your phone and they're out doing right. this. Right. So you all have day, every all day. of this 
sort of protraction going on of the right. shoulder blades right. and, and that kyphosis, that rounding of the upper back. So we see right. so many people building this body armor because of our postures that are unnatural and because of tension. This is also the posture of bracing and gripping. So when mm. we're feeling high levels of stress, which mm. many people are right now, mm -hmm. you naturally also begin to round, brace and curl in, creating unnecessary gripping. Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing that, that's of course restricting your body. It's not good for the spine and mm. you're not utilizing your core, right? right? So you're rounding right. it. So when you start doing the physical practice of yoga, which is meant to help to take care of the physical sheath of the body, you're going to dissolve the tension. You're going to reset the posture of your upper back in your body, and you're going to begin to develop those, the strong core stabilizing muscles that will naturally keep your chest open and lifted. Nice. So after you're practicing for about six months, people are just noticing, wow, I feel like taller. Mm -hmm. And my mm. posture is so much better. And mm. they start to notice other things going well in their life. And this is, the, again, that idea of nice. the mood that kind of rolls yeah. out. You're breathing slower. You're having moments of calm throughout the day. You're nice. breaking. You're breaking up that very slow, steady stream of stress that kind nice. of is just humming in the background for a lot right. of people. You're right. actually punctuating that. You're pulling out of that stream for a moment when you go to a yoga practice. You're moving from the sympathetic nervous system into the parasympathetic nervous system. You're creating vagal tone, which is allowing right. your body to do all the things it needs to do. So things are actually harmonizing inside of you. And, and all of this, a lot of this is related to hormones, right? So mm -hmm. we forget that when we are calming ourselves down through mindfulness practices, we're actually turning the dial on our hormones. Nice. So we have the ability to shift all of the things that are happening inside. So that's where I see, mm -hmm. we often are using, I'm noticing now the word cascade mm -hmm. in a negative context, the cascade of hormones. But what if we can be influencing the hormones to have a positive cascade? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is our ability. If we want to have all of these amazing things happening inside of us, we want to, you know, just be feeling well, having energy, digestion, sleep, mm -hmm. all of these different things. Most of them are regulated by our hormones mm -hmm. and actively practicing yoga and mindfulness thing. Mindfulness practices is one of the easiest and free ways that human beings can influence their hormones. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I love everything that you're saying. And uh, I have to give yo yo the yogis credit because like, you know, now in the health world, if you're even remotely into health, I feel like it's like mm -hmm. vagus nerve, vagus nerve, fight mm -hmm. or flight or, you know, parasympathetic. Oh, know. It's like pretty common knowledge these days, right? And yeah. if you ask pretty much any holistic health practitioner, coach to naturopathic doctor to like anywhere in between, and you ask them, like, what do you think see is like one of the biggest problems in health right now? And they're all pretty much everyone's going to say, like, people are in way too much fight or flight, way too mm -hmm. much sympathetic dominance. It's just insane. And then, yeah, you can't digest well. You can't sleep well. Your hormones get all messed up. You're you get inflamed. Like mm -hmm. the list just goes on and on. And I'm like. The yogis have been saying this forever. Like I remember going to a yoga <laughs> class like way back before 3, I was ever in years and yeah, counting. Like, they've been <laughs> talking about the vagus nerve forever. They were talking about the vagus nerve when people were like, "What's that?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's ancient, ancient wisdom, and it's so. I it, the need for it has increased. I think like you're yeah. kind of highlighting of yeah, our lifestyles have just become ridiculous you know i mean it's part of the reason i moved to hawaii mm -hmm. honestly because here people value calm mm -hmm. presence like if you're waiting for food or coffee somewhere like no one will be on their phone for like 15 mm -hmm. 20 minutes straight this mm -hmm. patience is like a very uh valued uh thing here right mm -hmm. of just being present not a lot of people don't even have social media here mm -hmm. like it's very like this calm centered lifestyle and appreciation of nature and others and it's rare you know yeah. and I, dropping into this environment after living in the mainland my whole life you know i'd say it's i'm like whoa like it makes once you're out like i'm sure you because you're kind of pulled out of it because 
of your yoga practice, right? Like I, I guarantee you're in parasympathetic quite a bit because you've trained that you recognize it, you're aware of it. Right. And it's hard not to see how bad it is now once you're out of it. Right. Yeah, well, You can have so much awareness, but I love to tell people this because I think that this is a great point you're making. And I think this is really great for the listener is that I live a fairly common lifestyle that most people would live that would have them feeling elevated levels of stress. Mm -hmm. But because of my practices, right. you're right. A lot of the time I'm sitting in the parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. I was just with someone yesterday where they said to me, they said, the moment you walk in the room, I can exhale and I'm grounded. Wow. And I, it's something about your energy. It's just nice. anchors me. Nice. And um, it is though, I have two kids, they're busy. I do all the driving, the extracurriculars. I have three jobs, teach in multiple studios, travel all around the world, teaching retreats. But most of the time I'm just right here. Yeah. And I, I totally believe it's because of these practices because I've been out of it and I know what it feels like. And I witness people around me. So what I want to offer people is the ability to change everything in their life and change nothing in their life at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So I know nothing you mean. in the external world needs to change. Right. But your internal experience mm. of it can change. And that's mm. what's profound. You're hitting on something so big and it's really resonating with me because um I I feel how you feel, right? Like I was at a biohacking type conference once and apparently they can measure how much you're if you're like more parasympathetic or sympathetic dominant. And I was like incredibly parasympathetic dominant. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know. Like, mm -hmm. and the perception I think that people have of me from the outside, I have four kids. Mm -hmm. I've got the podcast. I also do retreats. I've got a full client load. I do group coaching. I'm doing social media. I've got, I wrote a book. I'm writing another book. You know, like it, mm -hmm. I, the, what I get from people is I know you're really busy. I know you're super busy. Like, I feel like it's like they have the impression that I'm running around like it, like yeah. with a chicken with my head cut off, but I'm not like, mm -hmm. I really, really value like just sitting out here and being in silence and being in calm. And you can run your kids to jujitsu practice and mm -hmm. do podcasts and, you know, have your quote unquote, like full life but your response to all of it can be in calm depending on what's going on inside of you and practices like yoga. And I think a lot of this for me came through a pretty, I mean, yoga also, but a pretty deep dive in meditation yes. um, has really been able to bring me to that place where I can like regulate my nervous system much more effectively. No, my, And the reason I think this is so big is because Sometimes I guess because I have a lot of like spiritual community friends, right? And sometimes I feel like I get a little bit of this energy of like that I should just not be doing all of the things that I'm like caught up in the doing. And I just kind of like scratch my head because I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel like stressed out or overwhelmed. Like, I, I mean, granted, I pay people to help me, you know, like I'm not yeah. trying to do it all by myself. I don't, yeah. I really value my like peace, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I would almost prefer to be poor and, and peace than <laughs> wealthy and stressed my, out of my mind, you know, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that that's a really important thing that you're highlighting there is that we can, um, create what we'd like to create in this life and learn how to navigate that in a calm way. If we have practices, I, at least I think for you and for me though, it's, it's only been through practices that teach me what that feels like, get me in. And so I recognize the value of it. And then I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. This is much more effective way to lead your life. Yeah. 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 And also I love what you shared about what you are currently doing because part, this is another part of the point is I truly believe that the people who go out into the world and create big and dynamic, useful and beneficial, amazing things and offerings are often people who have tapped into this sense of inner calm. 
Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's creating the conditions for amazing things to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the whole thing is if you want to bring something big and beneficial into the world, you need to create the conditions within yourself, mm. the fertile soil, the fertile ground for that to right. experience to come forward. Right. And so it is spaciousness gives the invitation to birth something huge. It's mm-hmm. when you are distracted by all of the things mm-hmm. and you feel too busy that you can't actually get anything right. to take traction. Totally. Great point. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about, um, what do you call your thing? Do yoga with me. Do mm-hmm. yoga with me. Yeah. So like it, I just love telling the story because I love it when it's like the good guys win kind of thing. So <laughs> Yay. Um, I, I was raised in California. I was born in Canada, raised in California and decided to move back to British Columbia. And when I did in my mid twenties, um, I met someone named David Precision, who was another yoga teacher at a little studio I was teaching at. And he had this great idea. He wanted to bring more yoga to the world. He just wanted everyone in the world to do yoga and thought the world would be a better place. And he genuinely nice. believes this. He's one nice. of the nicest yeah. people I've ever met. And mm-hmm. so he had this idea. He was going to create a website and he was going to videotape himself teaching classes and put them on the website for people around the world to do for free. Mm-hmm. So there was no barriers to yoga. And mm-hmm. he shared his idea with all these other teachers and asked if they wanted to be part of it. And at the time, most teachers were like, online yoga? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. Right. Not right. interested. And, you know, like he had one camera. He had no money to pay you. <laughs> it was going to take seven hours to film one class and three months uh, to edit it. Like it was right. quite a process in the beginning. But I just thought it was such a great idea. And so him and I were working together for probably the first two or three years. It was almost all our classes on this little website. And we slowly got better. He got some more cameras. We got a little faster. The uh, quality got better. And then more teachers started to see the value in it and started Mm -hmm. joining in. And now we have, I think, like around 20 to 30 teachers on the platform. Mm. We're all really incredible, talented teachers, and we have hundreds and hundreds of free classes. We still have a, the majority of our classes on there are free for everyone to come and use. That's always been part of our mission. And we do have a subscriber option, but we call them sustaining members because mm. they're they're people who are paying a small subscription every year. Mm -hmm. so that we can continue to offer free yoga to people in the world. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) it's, it's just such a feel good little tiny company that's kind of gotten really big. And now we've got users in almost every country in the world. We get emails from people everywhere, just thanking us for the classes. Um, And And it's teach retreats too, which is great. Mm. Go meet these people. So awesome. And I just want to, I was just going to say, and when she says a small fee, I mean, it really is so affordable. Like the year, yeah. at least at the time of us recording this, the yearly is $108. Oh, yeah. So it's like $9 a month. And then if you want to do monthly, it's $13.99, you know? So yes, I mean, yeah. even, it's yeah. very affordable. I mean, that's like, if you were to go to a, a gym that has a yoga class and you didn't have a membership, you would pay like probably $25 for a drop-in fee for one yes, class, yeah. you know? Oh Yeah. And these classes are really great too. I have to say, you know, the majority of the teachers are very skilled teachers. Like these are the the top teachers in British Columbia. Many of us have 500 hour um, teaching credentials. I've taught seven rounds of yoga teacher training, as well as many of the other teachers on our site have. Like you're really getting access to incredible instructors who are inspirational every style and every level so it's it's just a great resource because again i think more people should be doing yoga and if we can remove the barriers that are there like they can't, people can't afford it or they don't have time or they don't mm-hmm. live somewhere where there's a yoga studio that's right. the other great thing they can still mm-hmm. have a really regular practice and yeah meditations too you know the physical practice of yoga isn't for everyone. And so we have a whole section on meditations because that, nice. like you know, is such an important part of wellness. Huge. Um, yeah. And like 
like the client that I was just talking to before we started recording this, I was like, Hey, check out this website. I'm getting ready to interview this lady. Um, she like, she's a mom and has young kids and is trying yeah. to work out early in the morning. She can't, she's not going to leave them and go to a class somewhere. Like she kind of has no other option right now. Yeah. And I, I, you know, we both have kids so we totally get that. So yeah. It's like, yeah, is it nice to go to an in-person class? Definitely, you know, yeah. it's a beautiful experience, but it's just not possible for everybody, you know? Yeah. So I'm really glad that you guys have created this. I really actually like wanted to have you on the show because I was like, I want to use that app. So I want I want to use it. So I'm sure other people will. <laughs> Let's get the word out. Yeah. Um. And then your retreats, like I'm noticing you've got one coming up at least, you know, I I don't know when this episode is going to release, but um, on your website, do yoga with me.com slash retreats. There's one coming up in um, Mexico. How often do you do these? Yeah. So I teach about probably five retreats a year. Okay. And a few other events, um, like the, we were just down to the LA Yoga Expo and the Toronto Yoga Conference, those kinds of things. But retreats are definitely the sweet spot. The place we go in Mexico, all of our retreat centers actually are very carefully chosen venues that we've been teaching at for years and have relationships with nice. because they align with our values. Nice. So they're also they're beautiful. Mission, yeah, they're mission based um, businesses. And the place in Mexico, um, it's called Marta Jare. It is beautiful right on the Pacific Ocean and it was started by this naturopathic doctor from San Francisco. And it's a, it's a success story nice. too. It started as this tiny little health clinic and then it's nice. turned into this beautiful retreat center. Oh, yay. So, okay. Yeah, it's really great to be able to go down there. I go down every year. Def yeah, that's amazing. Definitely check that out, guys. Um, we'll link up the website, but it's just the retreats tab on the doyogawithme.com. Um, I wanted to hit one more, like maybe just a little bit deeper on the benefits that you've seen with people, right? Because we mm -hmm. kind of got on our whole tirade about the nervous system and posture and all yeah. that stuff. But what are some more like, because I'll, I'll start. I have a friend that he almost died. They He was super inflamed, had all these gut issues. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with him. And he, his soul just was like, I think it was just an intuitive, like just start doing yoga and it sent him on this crazy healing journey, like mm -hmm. changed his entire life. So I'm sure you've seen people like this, you know, like what are some of the other transformation stories, I guess, are typical, with, you know, obviously with keeping privacy, I get all that, but what have you yeah. seen yoga do for people? Just get people a little fired up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be super vulnerable here and I can use myself as an example. Um, yoga actually saved my life as well. I was, when I first started doing yoga with that back injury, I was in the throes of anorexia, mm. like 90 pounds, Wow, numbing my body, mm. punishing myself, mm. not caring for myself at all mm. and completely disconnected. I think at that point in time from feeling, trying yeah. to not feel. Yeah. And so one of the benefits I've seen with other people who are going through this or something like that is it's resetting your relationship with yourself. Yeah. So by taking care of myself, going to yoga to take care of that back right. issue. Right. So you know what ended up happening is by caring for myself, suddenly I got to a place where I cared for myself. Right. It was through the act of caring through myself. Again, the philosophy turning into an experience. Mm -hmm. And so what you see is people do end up on these healing journeys because yoga, it is a healing tool and it's because it's working on the subtle body. So the physical body, your, what you think of as your physical self and where your mental and emotional body overlap, that's mm -hmm. what we reference as the subtle body mm -hmm. and yoga. That's where yoga is working. When you're doing these postures and these breathing techniques and you're dropping into the parasympathetic you're loosening things up so that things can actually filter up and out mm -hmm. because a lot of our energy ends up getting entangled in trying to push things down. Mm -hmm. And that requires, when you think about, think about it. So pushing something down requires force, right? Right. Right. And that's very different than letting something go. Mm -hmm. Letting something go is the release of effort. Right. So yoga is allowing when you're moving in the subtle body in the parasympathetic, you're allowing for those subtle energies to come up energies that may be mental. They might be emotional. They might be physical all tied together. You're allowing them to come up, to be felt, 
So again, there's a relationship to mm-hmm. feeling processed and then released, mm-hmm. which is why when people leave a yoga practice, there's often a sense of lightness. Yeah. Right. So you have a yep. lightness. It's mental, yep. it's energetic, and it's physical. You're feeling like you actually are lighter because you've let go of that entangled energy that's gotten all knotted up. Totally. So for mm-hmm. myself, I saw a huge transformation. For your friend, you saw a huge transformation mm-hmm. as well. Huge. What I see often as well is my students opening up more. So I'll Mm. see someone kind of come into practice the first few months they're in my class, they're quite closed. Mm. And this may be a physical thing you see, sort of that bracing posture as well, but they're closed. You know, you can just sense energetically their heart isn't open to the world. You know, there's something, there's some barrier there. They're sort of closed off. Mm -hmm. And the transformation I love seeing is, you know, at that six month mark, something shifts in their body, their posture starts shifting. Mm. But also things start to shift in their openness, in their Mm. warmth, in their Mm -hmm. connecting to other people. And then they'll Mm. share that with me. They often come up to me as a teacher in confidence and just say, like, since I started doing yoga, everything in my life has just gotten a little bit better. My Mm. relationships are better. I decided to shift or change my job, realizing it was actually making me miserable. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. something something Mm -hmm. will shift that's taking place outside of the yoga practice. Mm. It's amazing what happens when you feel safe inside yourself, mm. right? When that's yeah. established, when your love, it, it's, it's, you don't have to be in so much fear, right? Which yeah. I really think is what drives a lot of that sympathetic dominance, right? Is just like fear protection, right? And you slowly learn to be safe enough within yourself with that love and showing up for yourself and releasing things through these different exercises, we'll call them, you know, yeah. it's, um, it's really a beautiful freeing place to be, you know, yeah. and I, I, I'm sure there's some yogis listening to this, like, yes, you know, and if you don't know what she's talking about, you gotta find out, you gotta find out, <laughs> highly recommend. We um, have that, that saying of moving from insecurity to inner security. Nice. Yes. Right. So yes. it is that once you feel safe in yourself and yes. you develop confidence in your own abilities, yes. the cool thing about yoga too, this is a great shift that I like watching people do. They come into class. They don't really know the postures. They say out loud all the time, that's impossible. I'm mm-hmm. never going to be able to do that. I, you probably had this experience. Yeah, I'm sure impossible. I've said that. I'm sure I've said that. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to ever do that. And then guess what happens in six months? Mm. They end up doing that pose that they had d- deemed impossible. Right, right. So now they've just proven to themselves nice. something that was impossible became possible. And that's the mind shift that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's that switch of, oh, it just opens your perspective on mm-hmm. what you can do. And when mm-hmm. you have that growth mindset of like, oh, it's not impossible. It's not just this way or that way. There's all of these other ways that it could be. So I I love seeing that as well. People's Mm. perspective shifting. I love that. Okay. I have to pick your brain on this. Um, It's kind of a weird thing to close with, but I'm curious your thoughts on like hot yoga. (laughs) This is a totally, a friend wants to know, just kidding. This is totally a personal thing. Cause like I find hot yoga, like when it's really hot, like really, really hot. Right like borderline traumatizing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like looking around the class, like how are these people doing this? What are your thoughts on hot yoga? Is that something that you do? Do you teach that? Like, you know, maybe it's just, it takes, I, I definitely needed some more electrolytes because I was a little dehydrated, oh, yeah. I think. And I was like blacking out and stuff. So that was a lesson. Don't go into hot yoga depleted because yeah. that's not smart. But, you know, I'm curious your thoughts on hot yoga. Can you talk about why, you know, oh, yeah. and yeah. anything else? I'm a great person to ask this because I kind of dabble in all of the things. So mm-hmm. traditionally, I'm not a hot yogi. Room temperature is kind of where the majority of my teaching has always been. Mm-hmm. That being said, hot yoga has become such a trend. It's almost hard to find a not heated studio to teach in right now. So <laughs> I teach... 
I do teach some warm flows, but nothing to that extreme end where it's like the Bikram heat. You're right. And which is what re- what you're describing, like you're going to black out, you need electrolytes. Uh-huh. So I teach warm flows, which actually are kind of nice, especially in the winter in BC to kind of get a sweat every once in a while. But that's really what I uh-huh. feel. It's that moderation thing of every once in a while. So our body does do well, like our mit- mito- mitochondria science now can explain that when we stress ourselves a little bit, um, yeah. then they sort of rebuild. Mm-hmm. So little bits of stress incrementally are good in helping us stay strong and healthy and vital, vital and sort of diverse in our capabilities. But it's when we're doing those things repetitively, repetitively and over time, are you meant to be putting your body in that strain every day? Right. I would think probably not. And that that would mess with your electrolytes. Right. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I think it's all about, again, that moderation. If you like your hot yoga, try to, you know, moderate it Mm -hmm. and, you know, do things that are non-heated as well as heated. Mm -hmm. So I I can see both sides of, of where people are coming from. I don't think we need to push things to the extreme. And then it's also that individual individuation. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. you pointed out that the great thing about yoga is that we're meant to listen to ourselves and feel what's right. Mm -hmm. So this is where some people are going to like you, you know what, that really, really hot class is traumatizing for me. I love that you said that. (laughs) It was, I wanted to run and they asked us not to leave. And I was like, I am seriously going to run out of those doors right now. So if it's traumatizing, you don't need to be doing that. We don't want yoga to be traumatizing to us. It definitely put me in fight or flight. (laughs) Yeah, that's not what you want. So, but for other people, that intense heat just like really calms them, which is crazy. But that's how how unique we are. Yeah. So the, the great thing about yoga is that there is a style and teacher for everyone, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but not every style and teacher are for everyone. Right. <laughs> right. So it's about finding the right style and the right teacher for you. And, and really, I encourage people to dabble and to explore and really find the ones that resonate. Yeah. So like, and that's what I love about um, the website that we have that's on there too. There's lots of teachers who are great teachers, but they're just not my, they're not my jive. That's not the right. type of practice that I like to practice. Right. And then there's other teachers who I absolutely love. So mm-hmm. I, I, whenever someone goes on the site, I encourage them like try a variety of teachers totally. until you find the one that just clicks with your heart. Mm-hmm. That's such good advice. Cause I, I, that was my experience. I found this one yoga teacher in, in Utah. Shout out to Maggie. I, she made me fall in love with yoga. I was just yeah. like, yes, okay, I see. It is a big part of it because you might go to one yoga class yeah. and you don't realize it was just that instructor style or whatever yeah. that caused you to like think you didn't like yoga. Like keep, yeah. keep looking a little bit because I find it very unlikely that you just don't like yoga. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might be hard. It might challenge you. It might wake you up to some stuff you didn't realize was going on that you have like literally zero, you know, hardly any hip mobility and shoulder yeah. mobility. And it's like, whoa, you know, so that might be a little interesting pill to swallow. But <laughs> and once you start to feel like you can move again and you're inspiring me, I'm like literally going to go try to find a yoga class when we get done. Cause I'm like, right. Oh, I need that. Yes. That just sounds go so on the good. Website. Put on one of my classes. <laughs> yeah. I would love to yes. hear your feedback. Okay, yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you wanted to share that we didn't hit on? You know, I I just, I'm very passionate about yoga. I'm someone as well who, and I, I would love people to know this about me, is when I, when I started in my 20s, I used to be a professional swimmer. Mm-hmm. Not a professional swimmer, but uh, like a varsity swimmer on my high school team. And so I was very tight and muscle bound, a very different body frame. And yoga was not easy for me. And Uh I couldn't touch my toes and I couldn't, you know, do those things. So just want to encourage people who are maybe in the beginner's path Mm -hmm. to, to be open to that and to know that we do change. We evolve over time. Give it a shot. Just try it. I, I have never met anyone who put really a great effort into establishing a yoga practice and then regretted it in any way. Everyone mm-hmm. has found so much benefit from it. 
And please, you know, go on our website. A lot of the content is free. And for anybody who's listening to your podcast, this podcast, um, we can offer uh, our subscriber benefit as well, which just has some extra classes, some of our premium classes to them for free. Oh, we can nice. Give them Thank you. A free annual subscription. Aww. And so just use, I'll, I'll get the code created. We'll, okay. we'll use your name. We'll just use Tara to make it really easy. Okay. So how how about easy. Coach Tara? Can we do Coach, Coach Tara. Tara? That's the Perfect. typical. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's all, that's super generous of you. And yeah, I love that you ended with that because I know some people are intimidated, yeah. right? Like I've heard you that people, maybe they have a lot of extra weight on them and they think they're going to go in there and everyone's doing the splits and back bends yeah. and all. And they're like, uh, I'm not going in there, no. you know? <laughs> and first of all, it, I've never seen that kind of it, it it is like the least judgmental, most safe place ever if you were to go in person. But if you're still worried about it, like you can do it in your Online. own home and experience those benefits and you don't have to worry about that. So thank yeah. you so much. Um, all right, we'll wrap it up there. We'll link up everything. Thanks again for taking the time. And we are rooting you on something that started just out of love. Yeah. And of course, it's built into something that's just spreading more love and goodness for you and also those who get to benefit from it. So thank you. Thank you, Tara, for having me on. <laughs>